Good day everyone and welcome back to Jack's Cosplay. My name is Jax and I do cosplay. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I built this awesome Viking battle axe from Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So it's a fairly simple process. I used uh, a few basic tools, PVC pipe, uh, some EVA foam, and it only took me about two weekends to build. So this is a really fun little project that you can do with the new game coming out. So stick around if you want to see how I built this awesome battle axe. Okay, so the first thing I did to start building this axe was I went and I grabbed a few reference images from the gameplay, from the trailer, from the promotional art that has been released for the game so far, and I put them all into Inkscape and I drew up this template, which I will be using to reference all the pieces that I need for this build. Now I have made this template freely available to you. You can go down below to the description, you can grab this template as a PDF, you can print it out and you can build along. If you do build this axe, uh, let me know, uh, send me a picture on my Instagram. I'd love to see if anyone builds an axe using this template of mine. The next thing I did was I went and I just cut some PVC pipe to the length of the handle. I added a little bit extra on so if I need a bit more I can make adjustments later. I'd rather have too much than too little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this PVC pipe in some 8mm EVA foam just to bulk it out a bit more. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have gone ahead and I have cut this piece of 8mm EVA foam which I am going to wrap around the PVC pipe like that and glue it in to make the pipe a bit thicker. Um, but the EVA, because it hasn't been heat treated yet, it is still wanting to hold to its flat shape. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit it with a heat gun and curl it into that shape a bit more so it's less likely to want to fold away from itself once I have glued to the pipe. So I'm just going to keep that up. Now I am going to glue these two pieces together with some contact cement. I am just using Genkem contact cement. Um, this is probably reversed for you because of the camera. So yeah, that's Genkem contact cement. Um, yeah, and basically the way contact cement works is you put it onto the two surfaces that you want to glue together, then you wait an amount of time, it usually says on the specific uh, on the packaging for which specific brand you're using how long you have to wait and you want to wait until the two surfaces get tacky and then as soon as you touch the two surfaces together they are going to bond instantly on contact um, I have already gone ahead and I have used some sandpaper to just roughen up the surface of the PVC a bit so that the glue has something something to hold on to something to grab um, so yeah so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that Okay, and there we go, we have attached the EVA foam to the PVC pipe. Now if you'll notice here, you'll see I have left this section uncovered because this is where the axe head is going to attach to the handle. I didn't want to bulk that up um, because this is going to go inside the head that we built. Um, there's also some nasty seam lines uh, from where it was glued together. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to take some acrylic sealant. Um, I'm just going to put that along there and then use my finger with some water to smooth that out. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now.
The next thing that I am going to do to make the axe is I'm going to start working on the head. Now I have gone ahead and cut out, I uh, have gone ahead, <laughs> gone ahead and cut out the head temp uh, part of the template, which I will use to transfer onto some 10 millimeter EVA foam. Now for the head, I'm going to be using floor mat foam. And the reason for that is, is because it is what I have available in my workshop at the moment. And currently there's still a lockdown due to world events going on. Um, and I'm trying to avoid leaving the house as much as possible. Um, so this is what I'm going to use. Um, and so my plan for this is I'm going to cut out uh, the template from the floor mat foam three times and then uh, sandwich them together uh, to build up a fairly thick axe head. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. So I have gone ahead and I have cut out my pieces of EVA foam which are going to form the blade. Um, now because these are cut out of floor mat foam, uh, you'll see on the back they've got like this texture. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go with my rotary tool uh, with a sanding drum on and I'm just going to go and sand down this texture um, so that they have better adhesion to each other when I sandwich the three pieces together to create this accent so and then once I have glued them together I am also going to just take the rotary tool and just clean up the seam lines here um, just in case they're not perfect fits uh, just to make it a bit neater and so it looks more like one piece so we're gonna go ahead and do that now okay so I have gone ahead and I have sanded the backs of all the texture on these pieces of EVA foam um, now you don't necessarily need to get rid of all the texture uh, you just kind of want to break it up um, because the way that texture is created is through heat sealing and so the glue then doesn't bond as well. So you kind of just want to break the surface of it. Um, if you wanted to get rid of the texture completely I'd recommend rather using something like a band... Um, a, what's the word? What's that tool called? I can't think of the word right now, uh, I'll make it appear here, I cannot think of what the word of the tool is right now, you probably think I'm an idiot, you probably know what it is, uh, but it's this tool here. Orbital and belt sander, belt sander, yes, that is that is the tool I was looking for. If you want to get rid of the texture completely from the, from the floor mat foam, you can use a belt sander to and you can just run your pieces over there to get rid of it completely. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in again with the contact cement and I am going to glue these three pieces together and sandwich them. And so let's get right onto that. Okay, so now that I've gone ahead and dremeled these edges so that they are a bit more even, uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to bulk up the back of the head a bit. Um, if you look at the reference images, if you look at the pictures online, you'll see it's almost like it's thicker at the back and then tapers in. Um, obviously, it's thicker where the handle attaches into the axe, um, so that there's a bit more strength grip, um, I'm not sure what the correct terminology is, but more 
body to it where it attaches. I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do is I've got some five millimeter EVA foam. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to trace out this profile twice onto the five millimeter five millimeter EVA foam. I'm going to stick it on either side with some contacts made, and then I'm going to taper it down just so it looks a bit bulkier there and has a bit of a taper. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I, I have put this piece on and I have just sanded it down a bit uh, with the Dremel to smooth it out. Uh, so now the next thing that I want to do is I want to put the actual edge of the blade on here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to mark a center line down there and where I want the, the edge to start on the side panels here. And then on either side I'm going to go in with a craft knife and I'm going to cut a 45 degree from here to the the center line there um, to, to just get rid of most of the material and then I'm going to go clean it up with the Dremel so that we can get a nice edge on this plate. And there we go, now that that is finished, our blade has a nice edge to it. Just like that. The next thing that we are going to move on to is we need a way for this head of the axe to attach to the handle of the axe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a spade bit um, to drill out a hole in here the diameter of this pipe, which is 25 millimeters, so that this spade bit can... so that this handle can fit directly into the axe head like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera, um, purely because it's a bit difficult to set up my uh, camera and everything by the drill press and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and drill that hole. Um, I can show you what the hole will look like. So this was just a piece of scrap foam that I was trying it out on. So the spade bit is just going to make a hole like that. And after that is done, then we will be able to attach the head to the handle. Okay, so I've gone in with the spade bit and I have drilled a hole in the head of the axe so that the handle can insert into the axe like that. Um, now I'm not going to go ahead and attach these straight away because I feel like it will be easier to do the details on the handle and on the axe while they are still two separate pieces and then once I finish the details on them then I will go ahead and attach them into one but so far I am really liking how this axe is turning out so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working on the details for the head and the handle the details on the handle mostly consist of more rings of foam to create some of the rings that go around it um, then there's the grip which will uh, the grip the actual grip I will put on after it's been painted because I'm gonna cut uh, use some faux leather vinyl to make the grip of the axe and um, then there's a little cone part that goes under the bottom there so I need to make that and yeah then there's also a bit of scroll work and knot work on the handle then for the axe head what I need to do is I need to score some lines in here and then open them up with a heat gun to create that detail part of the axe head and then I also need to make the all the scroll work I need to make that out of some two millimeter EVA foam which I can then stick here onto the axe head um, and then there's also the little uh, ball that goes on the back of the Axe, it's almost like a little hammer. So we're gonna go ahead and start that now. Okay, so for this uh, ball that goes at the back of the axe head, I have got this little ping pong ball, or should I say, pink pong ball? <laughs> no, no, okay. So I need to attach this ball to the back here, but there's also on the template, you'll see there's some lines between. So I'm gonna make a little cradle for it, 
of some five millimeter foam, which I can stick on the back here, which will then cradle this ping pong ball against the back here. And then there'll also be some pieces that go around it with some design on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've got the, the little hammer attached to the back of the axe now. Um, so as I said, I used a ping pong ball, but you could use any other little plastic ball that you can find or whatever you find works best for you. Um, next what I'm going to do is I am going to go and I'm going to score some lines into the blade here and then hit it with a heat gun so that they can open up um, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I have gone and got these detail lines on both sides uh, just by using a knife, scoring it and hitting it with a heat gun. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to make the scroll work pieces as seen on the template that go here. Now to make these pieces, I am just going to cut a big piece of two millimeter EVA foam craft foam and then I'm going to go in and cut out all the little intricate bits to make it look like knotwork and then I'm going to go ahead and glue it on to this piece. So And with that complete, the head of the axe is done. I'm just gonna go ahead and give you a closer look here. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. And we can just... And I mean, if you wanted, you could just leave a chair without adding all the details to the handle, but I am going to go ahead and add on all the details to the handle to complete this epic Viking axe. Okay, and so I cut some pieces of foam at a 45 degree angle um, and glued them onto the top here. And then I also just went in with the soldering iron and just did some texturing along there so it looks a bit more like wood uh, when it gets painted. And once I start dry brushing it, it will really pick up those textures and whatnot. So now I'm just gonna go add a few more of the detail bands around the handle and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I have just finished up adding a whole bunch of detail to the handle. So uh, we've got this little ring around here, this other ring with a taper, this detail plate here, and this ring here. Then the next, uh, so this part I'm going to leave blank until it is painted so I can then wrap the vinyl 
throw leather around here to create the leather grip. And then I think what I'm going to do next is work on the pommel of the axe. And I think how I'm probably going to do that is I'm going to make some discs out of foam. I'm just looking at the template there. Make probably about two discs out of foam, which will stick on the end here. And then have a cone, which comes off the end. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do for the cone. I'm either probably going to make it out of foam, or if I can find something that's the right shape, I might use that. Um, I'm still not entirely sure how I'm going to do that. But yeah, so that's the next thing to do is the discs and the little cone. And then the construction of this is pretty much done. So yeah. All right, so it is a new day, but still wearing the same clothes uh, for consistency. But don't worry, I did a load of laundry in between filming. So be clean, bro, be clean. So last I said I was going to look for something to make the pommel. I was going to say I was going to use uh, two discs of foam and then a cone on the end and I wasn't sure when I was going to make the cone or see if I could find something but since then I have been to my local craft store and I went and I was looking through the craft section and I found this and this is a polystyrene styrofoam ice cream Anywho, so what I plan to do is I'm going to cut off the cone part of this, cut off the cone part, and use that for the cone at the bottom of the thing. I'm also going to coat it, in, I'm going to skin it in some 2mm craft foam and then add some details to it. But the problem with using styrofoam or polystyrene is contact cement will dissolve it, hot glue will melt it, and I think super glue will probably also dissolve it. So I was, I was a bit confused as to what glue I was going to use to glue the EVA foam to this and then this to the handle, which is when I then stumbled across this. Now I know the writing is probably reversed for you, I'll see if I can put the name down here, but this is an EVA and styrofoam glue, so it's pretty much perfectly suited for what I need to do, gluing EVA to styrofoam. So we are going to go ahead and do this, so I'm going to cut the discs, cut this down, glue some 2mm craft foam to this and then stick it onto the end of the pommel. So let's get right into that. And there we have it, the construction of the Valhalla hat Valhalla axe is done. I could not be more happy with how this axe has turned out. As you can see I've got the cone here, I've added some 2 millimeter detail, I've got the two discs, got the axe here. I also went ahead and added a disc on the top because I forgot to add that piece on when I was making the head. Uh, added some googly eyes for some river details around there. Attached the handle to the body of the to the head of the axe and I have now finished the construction. So now we can start painting, but before we paint, we've got a primer. So I'm just gonna be using some cold wood glue, PVA glue, with a mixture of water, which I'm just gonna brush over all of this to prime it. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so I finished priming the axe and I also went and gave it a coat of black spray paint. I have waxed at the handle because here it's going to be covered with the faux vinyl leather later. Uh, but as you can see here, I've, uh, I've just given it a basic black spray paint. Uh, nothing too fancy about it. Um, and you see I did that uh, while hanging it um, suspended. So, because ideally you want to be holding your spray, can, spray paint can vertically while spraying. So I just uh, put a wire in my tree, tied some string onto the axe and hung that up to the wire and then I could spray the axe. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to use some metallic silver and gold um, to just go and do the colour on this axe. Um, so for this axe I kind of wanted it to look a bit weathered, a bit old, um, which is why I gave it the black base coats and I'm just going to go and dry brush the metallics on. So yeah, let's go ahead and do the dry brushing.
And there we have it. That is how I built this awesome Viking axe from Assassin's Creed Valhalla. If you make this axe or any of the other props that I've built on this channel, please share them with me on my Instagram and my Twitter on social media so I can check out the awesome builds that you guys are doing. If you have any other props that you want to see me build, whether they're from movies, video games, television series, anime, comic books, let me know down below in the comments and I will see if I can make a video building those props. Let me know down below also what you thought of this build, any improvements that I can make, or just let me know if you enjoyed it or not. Please consider liking and subscribing this video, and if you want to hit that bell notification icon so you can be notified when I upload future builds, that would be great. Thank you so much everyone, this has been your boy, Jax Cosplay.